I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. But they're life, 
and they're powerful. They're the word of God, amen? And the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, amen? Hallelujah, God, we just thank you. We just thank you. We give you the praise on this morning. We give you the honor on this morning. You are worthy to be lifted up. You are worthy to be praised. The word tells us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name because our God is good all the time. And all the time, our God is good. Our God is good all the time. And all the time, our God is good. God is good sometimes. And sometimes our God is good. Our God is good when? And all the time, hallelujah, give the Lord a hand of praise in here. Give the Lord a hand of praise in his house on this morning. I don't know about you guys. I'm telling you, I'm so excited about Jesus and all that he is and all that he does and all that he keeps doing. You know what? I got a thousand things that I can complain about, but I refuse to complain I refuse to let my problems get me down. I refuse to let the enemy win. And you ought to refuse too because you don't have to. We walk in victory. The battle's already been fought. And the victory's already been won. And all we have to do is walk in. And isn't that an easy job to just walk in it? If you allow God to have his way in your life, if you allow God to have your problems and your issues and, and everything that's going on with you, the worry and the fear and, and the heartache, if you allow God to have that, if you give it to him and not take it back, if you give your problems to him and not take it back and leave it here at the altar, do you know how awesome it is to just walk in it? Because that's all we have to do. The Bible tells us to bring our burdens to him. His yoke is easy. His burdens are light, not ours. His yoke is easy. His yoke is easy. And we know that it's because of the anointing that yokes are destroyed. It's because of his anointing, not our power, not our strength. Nothing that we can do, hallelujah, we can stick our nose in it all we want, but God is all powerful, he's in control, he has all things in his hands, and if we just surrender to that to him today, I don't know what you came in here with, I'm here to welcome you to church, but this is welcome to church, welcome to our Lord and Savior, who, where there's nothing impossible for him, no problem that you have is too big, no problem that you have is too small, he is able to do the impossible. He's able to do above all that we're able to ask or think according to the power that he's already placed in us. So it's in you. The power is in you. Just give it to the Lord. Go down in prayer. Don't leave here the way that you came on today. Don't leave here the same. Don't leave here bound. We are not bound. Jesus lifted us. We are not bound. We are not bound. We are heaven bound. That's about it. We're heaven bound, which is a praise all in itself. It make me dance all over again. We're heaven bound, but we are not bound. We are not bound, and we don't have to walk around like we're defeated. I don't care if it looks like it. I don't care if everything around you looks like the enemy is on all sides, but we know we're surrounded by God. We're surrounded by Christ. It might look like we sing that song. It might look like the enemy's got us surrounded, but we know who we're surrounded by. We know who fought our battle. We know that we have the victory. We know that there's power in the name of Jesus. We know all of this stuff. So we just got to always remember to call on the name of Jesus. Always remember to walk in the things of him. Always remember when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise the standard. What is that standard? What is that standard? Can an enemy come against that standard? No. No. He doesn't have authority over God and he doesn't have authority over you. Let me tell you, God gave us authority over him. So don't walk around like he has authority because he does not. He does not. You speak those things that are not as though they were. He does not have authority over you. Don't dare let him think for an inkling that he has authority over you. Yeah, he, he, gonna, he come. He come, but he better come. Correct, because when we got the Lord on our side, when the Lord is fighting our battles, I, I, I got my husband, but, but, and I got my friends, but, but when I have the Lord, guess what? There's nothing that the enemy can do. There's no weapon that he can form against me that shall be able to prosper. None. That's what our word says on this morning. And our word is alive and our word is true. So I just thank God on this morning. Give God another hand of praise for lifting you. 
for lifting you, for lifting you. Amen. Amen. Welcome to church. We'd like to take this time to recognize any first-time visitors. I don't see any first-time visitors, but I see some returning visitors, and we're glad to have them with us, with us today. They stop in periodically. Ms. Darrow and her husband in the back, thank you for stopping in and visiting with us, Ms. Darrow. She got here early this morning, and she was already praising in the back, listening to the, the praise songs, and so had a little pre-church before church, which is always good. And we just thank God, Darl, that you are our uh, visiting member. You come in and you drop in all the time and, and just see about us, and we're glad to have you on this morning. Praise God for you. Amen. Any uh, announcements on this morning? All right. So uh, during Mother's Day, we pick up our Echoes, we picked up our Echoes baby bottles, and so we usually keep those filling with change, checks, cash. You can put them with the put the stuff that jingle in there, but the stuff that folds go in just as well. So if you want to do that, uh, please help us support Echoes. Uh, those baby bottles are brought back on Father's Day, and so um, if you picked up a bottle, please bring it back for Father's Day. If you did not. Uh, we have more baby bottles that you can get in. It just helps support this community and help support um, helping our mothers, our single mothers, our mothers who are struggling out there uh, in Great Falls here. So thank you guys for doing that. All right. And today we are celebrating baby Trey. He is uh, here. He is cute as a button. He's on uh, Facebook if you haven't seen him. Uh, <laughs> He, he's already made his debut on Facebook with the pictures, and you know Desi loves her pictures, and so we're going to celebrate him today at 3 p.m., and I can't see the address uh, from here. 721 Central Avenue. Okay, 721 Central Avenue, so be there or be square, amen. <laughs> And if you're able, Desi's not looking for any gifts or anything, but uh, she said you could bring some baby diapers. That's always helpful when you have little ones. Uh, you know that uh, diapers are expensive, and uh, you need them for a long time because it takes a little bit of time to get them potty trained. So uh, diapers are appreciated if you're able. If not, just come out and support. Amen? Amen. All right, Musical Monday in the park. Join us on Monday at 6 p.m., at Gibson Park, bring your lawn chair, blankets, snacks to share. We will see you there. Also, we have our uh, weekly Bible studies. Uh, so right now, our women Bible study is on hold until further notice. Uh, yes, Naya? So the women are going to the park. The men, is, they're still wanting to try to get ahead of us in their Bible studies. So we will be still bringing, probably talking about some word at the park as we're listening to praise and worship music that is also word filled. So we'll be getting the word also. Amen. Amen. So the men are going to get smarter and smarter and smarter in the word of God. Amen. So they're still meeting on Mondays. The women are not meeting as of right now throughout the summer. So um, then also on Wednesdays, we have our uh, pastor who typically brings the word uh, in our Bible study. Lots of good meat, nuggets, everything in there. I always tell people, I said, Sunday, mon Sunday morning is like you get, uh, you know, all of the, the entrees and all that stuff, but you really get good meat on Wednesday because you're able to just listen and, and just absorb the word and, and there's no other foo-foo stuff that's in there, just pure word. And so we learn a lot on Wednesdays, Wednesday night, so join us at 6.30 p.m. And we're at the mission this week at Wednesday, on Wednesday, so join us there. Won't be any Bible study online, right? Perfect. Save the date. Uh, Sunday the 31st at 11 a.m., we're going to take our church out of the four walls, and we're going to head over to worship in the sun shine. Amen? Amen. Worship in the sunshine. There'll be a little barbecue, hot dogs, and probably some hamburgers and some chips and some, some water. So <laughs> it's going to be hot. Y'all need water. No soda. I'm not buying no soda. Just kidding. <laughs> 
And then our youth, our teen Bible study, ages 12 to 17, every Wednesday in June at 6.30. The kids did a wonderful, wonderful job yeah. on Fifth Sunday. Let's give them another hand of praise. Our greatest investment is in our children, amen? Yeah. We pray that as we bring them up in the word and in the things of God, that when they're old, that they won't depart from it. I mean, they may try to stray a little bit, but the Lord always bring them back because we pray for them constantly and we instill God's word in them. And the Bible tells us that, that we ought to raise them up in a way that they ought to go. And when they're old, hopefully they, not hopefully, when they're old, they don't, won't depart from it. So, amen. Happy anniversary. Who's that? No. That's anniversary time. Birthdays. Any birthdays? So we got Paul, he's 25, 36 years of practice in 25, perfect. The baby, she's turning three, came back just for us to sing happy birthday to you. Do we have somebody in the back? Joe birthday, he trying to hide his birthday? Joe is turning 26. He's a little older than Paul. <laughs> oh, no, he might try to bull ride. <laughs> His wife says no, so good. We want Joe in one piece. Amen. Anybody else? Any anniversaries? No anniversaries? Amen. Can we have our children, our birthday choir, please come up? announcement with our pastor. Well, today is a day that we knew was coming, but we aren't really looking forward to it. My wife usually does this, but today's the day we're going to be saying farewell to Christian Garcy. He's a, uh, yeah, boo. boo. <laughs> Not boo you, boo you leaving. <laughs> Make sure people get that. Um, my wife usually does this, so I'm probably not going to do it as well as she does, but I'm just going to kind of speak from my heart. When Christian came to the church, he immediately had an impact. Uh, I thought his impact was going to be in his singing, because if you've heard him sing, you sometimes you'll hear him sing a song, and then you hear it played on the radio, and then you turn the radio off, and you're like, that's not as good as Christian sings it. I'd rather hear Christian's version. But that wasn't his impact. I thought his impact might be his preaching, because when he preaches, he preaches from the heart, and I, I appreciate a preacher who will cry while he preaches, amen? I think there's something special about that, but that's just me. But it wasn't just that. Was his impact with our youth. He touched them. He talked to them. He, he got to them in a way that so many people couldn't. And, and it wasn't just that, you know, that, that smiling, happy-go-lucky thing that sometimes we, we expect from our youth ministers. We had Christian who would get in your children's face and tell them that they were messing up. But he had a way of telling them that they were messing up then let them know that 
they still were loved. He's going to be missed. His family's going to be missed. It's a hard thing, but we know that God has bigger things ahead for Christian. We wish he could stay here, but we know that he's uh, going on to work as a chaplain in the United States Army. Amen. 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 Almost at Air Force. <laughs> but we just want to give you a small token of our appreciation uh, just to let you know that we love you. We're going to miss you. Uh, we're going to miss your children. Um, we're going to miss mom. Um, so before I give Christian his gift, I'd like to ask his mom to come up because she was kind of a member of the church yes. before she came yes. to the church. Yes. 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 We used to have a, a prayer call. We used to have an early morning prayer call, and it would be about 7 o'clock in the morning, and she would always be on that call. And she'd always be on that call, praying for people and, and lifting up the Lord and always had a good, energetic spirit about her. And she said, I just want to get to Montana. <laughs> and we got her to Montana, and now she's got to go. But that's okay, because she can still get on the prayer line, and she can still be in our hearts. And if our understanding, Washington's not too far away. Amen? Amen. So we just want to give you this. Let you know we're going to love you and miss you. Amen. Amen. Do you want to say anything? I've been to Latvia here, receiving the word of God, and all your brothers and sisters are in love with us. I'm going to miss you very much. Amen. 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 So, Christian, again, we just want to present this to you on behalf of the church. So you can put in your house, whether it be a big house or a tiny house. <laughs> that might be an inside joke. They might not know that. <laughs> A lot happened in Montana that I was not expecting to happen. I wasn't expecting to be called, you know, to be a chaplain. Never seen things happen the way they did. Never expected. I came into Montana just thinking I was following my wife to another place and just lucking in. And then God allowed me to, to find this place online. And I'm watching that as Pastor and Peggy were always just uh, leading services and announcements and how they're loving people. And, and my wife and I automatically were like, we want to go try this place. And from day one, it's been a blessing. And then I got to meet the youth and spend time with each and every single one of them, some on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Sometimes it was a trip to, to Popeye's, which let me tell you, you want to get to a kid's heart, take them to Popeye's. Amen. It all starts with fried chicken, let me tell you. Um, but I was able to, to see the need, the need for youth here. There's so many youth who are in need. And, and I see people like Brother Rico, and I've talked with them and with him and met with other youth pastors that seen the need for youth. Youth is in need of somewhere to go, someone to just love on them. And it makes it easier to do that when you have a church that fully supports you. It makes it easier to do that when you have a pastor and first lady who pick up when you call them and see the need right away. The living grace is a home. And I'm not going away from my home. My home is just using, God is using me as a branch of this home to touch other people. Amen. 
I'm not going away from Living Grace. They, Living Grace is going with me to be an impact everywhere else. I'm very grateful for both of you. There's things that people don't know that you guys have been a part of and been there for us. you guys like crazy and the rest of living grace all of you guys Paul Carlton Deacon Rio Van Thomas's Joe and Deb you guys I mean I've, I've seen you guys through a lot faith your support with the youth I know we're just willing to be there I know I can't mention everybody and I apologize and most of all my praise team if y'all don't know, praise rehearsal is where we let loose. We used to let loose. <laughs> We'd have so much fun. But I will tell you, I'm leaving, and I'm just being open heart and truthful with you. I'm leaving with an, an unsettling feeling. Man, I'm Fred, I'm like looking at everybody and I'm just, Don, I'm, man, I, I'm really going to miss everybody, but I am leaving with an unsettled, I guess, unsettled feeling because there's so much work that needs to be done. There's so much love that needs to be spread yeah. and so many people that need to be reached that I'm leaving with an unsettled feeling. But I know you guys are going to continue that fight. Amen. Amen. You're going to continue to resist what the enemy is trying to say is a lie. It's not worth your time because it is totally worth your time. And I look at certain people in the audience and I know why it's worth your time. Jason, Christian, Ruben, Jazan, I mean, freak, man. There's so many kids like them out there that need to be plugged in somewhere. Lori and just her walk this past year has been a blessing to me. <clears throat> and if y'all don't mind, I want to sing a little bit of a song <laughs> about that unsettling feeling that I have. And it reminds me. When peace like a river Attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot thou hast told me to say, it is well, it is.
Heaven and grace, I love you guys so much. And the reason why it is well is because it was never mine to start with. I just been filling in. God's still going to do God's will, amen? His will is still going to be done through you guys. One person doesn't make a ministry. One person doesn't make a church. One person is a part of a family, right? So God's will is still going to be done. That is why it is well. Because it was never mine to hold on to. Amen. Amen. God bless you. miss you brother however y'all do know that he does uh, Facebook live so tune in I'm sure he's going to be doing it more and more well this is the greatest part of the service praise Jesus and stomp on the devil this is what we call tithes and offerings and we all ought to be doing this dancing a jig as we're doing it. Amen. I get to do that at home because we got this thing called Venmo. Yeah. Yes, oh, yes. And, oh, and Realm as well. You can do it on Realm. Join me as I read a little scripture here from Matthew 10. We're going to go 5 through 8. This is in the uh, Amplified. Jesus sent out these 12, charging them. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and do not go into any town of the Samaritans. But, I like big buts. But, go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Drive out demons, praise Jesus. Freely, without pay, you have received. Freely, without charge, give. There ain't nothing that I have that wasn't given to me by God, including my money. If God did not give me the ability to work, the talent, well, I don't know how much talent it is to swing a hammer, but he gave it to me in order to make it so that I need to give it back. Okay? That's what tithes and offerings is about. Give. Okay? Give what he's already given you. He's not asking you to give anything that is yours anyway. So just give it back. And he will blow your doors off. Absolutely. Blow your socks off. The ushers that come forward, join me as we go to the Lord. Father God, we just praise you and thank you. It's been another beautiful morning. We've already had church. And we're going to continue to have church. Church should be done each and every day, all day long. So we're going to do that, Father God. We're going to praise you. We've praised you with some song. We've praised you with some uh, uh, thanking some folks that that you brought to us. We are going to praise you some more. But right now we're going to praise you with our funds that you have given us. Father, your word declares that when we give, you you, you give it back. Press down, shaken over, overflowing. Our vats are filled and full because we are obedient to your word. We are a blessed people so that we can be a blessing. So we just thank you for that, Father God, as we give today. Blow our socks off just like your word promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'd like to sing this with a Christian in my heart. I, um... I love Christian. He was a big part of my walk back to Jesus. And I, um, you know, it was really a special thing. Um, 
first of all, to hear Christian's voice. <laughs> um, his voice calls me home. Um, and that, I think, is what really drew me initially to Living Grace. And then, lo and behold, God had this amazing plan that I was needed here. Amen. And, um, and not only, you know, was I needed, but I need Living Grace. And I Amen. need to be up here singing these songs and, and honoring God. Amen. And so I just am so grateful to Christian. And, and I first, first heard this song, and he sang this with the praise team, and it's kind of an anthem for Living Grace. So let's sing this with um, Christian in, in our hearts.
This is my offering yeah. in every moment I would hold my faith. That's right. I'm learning to trust you That's right. even when I can't see it. And even in suffering, I have to believe it. Say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say the jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. I don't want to follow my own way. Chasing feelings, spirit lead me. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It felt like a burden, but once I could grasp it, you took me further. And simply to see you is worth it all. My life is an altar that you buy your fall. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll be. Say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Teach me how to follow in your ways. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, lead me. Spirit, lead me. Spirit. 
is all I've got. Yes. I have to believe you still bring water from yes. the rock yes, yes, yes. to satisfy my thirst and to love me at my worst. And even when I don't remember, you remind me of my worst. training in my thoughts I lay down everything cause you're all that I want I'm planning on my knees this is the cup you have for me and even when it don't make sense I'm gonna let your spirit I know everybody's probably looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's okay. I just seen it in her face. What do you think you're doing? So I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. You know, Christian is a man of God. Yes. And anybody who knows Christian knows that. But I'm going to tell you some of the ways that Christian has affected us, okay? We're pretty much private people. We like our time. We've been blessed with six wonderful grandkids who fulfill our lives. And at times, really honestly, we want to be left alone. But Christian? Nope. Nope. He wouldn't leave us alone. Nope. He'd call me up and he'd say, I'm going to take your kids to Popeye's. I'm going to take your kids to TC, whatever that yogurt place was. He'd take them, you know, Cole Stones. But the most important thing that Christian gave was he gave us his love. Yes. 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 Christian yes. gave us pure, honest Christ love. love. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Christian reached inside of every single one of us and pulled out something mighty in every single person. Our youth are stronger because of him. Yes. Our youth will know God because of him. It breaks our heart that he is leaving, yeah. 
But I know that God's got so many mighty things for Christian. And my love for you, Christian, and my boy's love will never end. And I hope you come back and see us. The next thing is I want to tell you a funny story. <laughs> you remember a couple months ago when Gibson Flats, down below us, we live above Gibson Flats, caught on fire? Jim, we got woke up and pounding on our door and said, look out your backyard, you're back, you're on fire. So Jim and me got up and we watched the fire and then I went and I laid back down and he said, no, he said, you, you lay down and, and I'll take it from here, okay? So pretty soon, about an hour later, we get a pounding on the door and it's the police and they're telling us that we have to leave our home. So we're loading up the few things that we know we have to get, important documents and stuff like that, and we're loading up our vehicles and stuff, and they only gave us a certain amount of time to leave. So as we're leaving, Christian says to us, he says, don't worry, don't worry. He said, I, I text Pastor Christian, and I asked him to pray for us, and we said to him, we said, what? You told Jason, me, and Jim, what? You did what? At this time of the morning, you text him? And Christian said, don't worry. He won't answer. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. He's not going to answer. Well, it was before 4 o'clock in the morning. So what happens? He answers. He answers. <laughs> Within seconds. We get to my office. Who walks through the door? But Christian. Who sits with us? Christian. Who loves on us? Christian. I hope really honestly that Living Grace does one thing. We take the example and we love back on our kids because one day they're going to be the adults. And I hope everybody knows that LaToya, I love your children just like they're my own. I love everybody's children. And Christian, I thank you for giving me that. And I love you from the bottom of my heart. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and the very darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice it trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great time how great lift your voices living grace how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our
Altar calls. Altar calls are not just a part of a service. Altar calls are an opportunity. Amen. It is an opportunity to let go and let God. It's an opportunity to stop working on that need. Whether it's your marriage. Maybe it's bringing it up to the altar and giving your marriage to God. It's that financial burden that you're having and maybe coming up to front and giving it to God. You may say to yourself, why do I have to leave where I am? Can he hear me where I am? Yes, but it's the action of actually walking it out and actually leaving it. That's why we have the altar call. Because it's not guaranteed that you're going to make it home once you leave this place. It's not a guarantee that, that everything is going to be hunky-dory the next day. I woke up this morning with my morning starting out the wrong way, saying stuff that I shouldn't have been saying. But Satan will use these moments to keep you from where you need to be. Satan may be telling you right now, don't even get up and go because you're going to make the same mistakes tomorrow. But that's a lie because you know what? God forgave you today for what happened yesterday, today, and what's going to happen tomorrow. His son died on a cross, not for just today, not for those people then, but he died for your sins of today and tomorrow. Stop allowing the enemy to keep you where you're at. Stop allowing the chains to hold you back. Stop allowing your burdens to hold you where you're at and just come to the front and leave it here. Stop taking every minute for granted. This moment right now is for you. This moment right now is for you to lighten the load. This moment is here for you. If you have not trusted him, go ahead and trust him now. This moment is for you to seek God first. To allow God to move in your life and for you to stop trying to do it on your own. Because we serve a mighty God. We serve a God that's greater than any problem, than any disease, than any sickness, than any financial burden. We serve a God that walks on streets of gold right now. There is a place besides here. There is a place besides here. But not everybody can get to that place without acknowledging Jesus Christ. The Bible tells that he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man shall come to the Father but by me. You may be a great person, but without Christ, you're still just short. Because the Bible tells us that we all fall short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that we are not perfect. That our perfectness that we think is great is as filthy as dirty rags. But let me tell you, I don't care how dirty your rag may be, Jesus died for you, and he cleanses that. So when you stand before God, we don't see the stains. He's not going to see the stains. He's going to see a clean slate because he's going to see the blood of his son that was shed on the cross for you, for your mistakes. So as we continue to worship, I'm inviting you, we're asking you, we're pleading with you to leave it here. Don't walk out with it. Heavenly Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this moment, this opportunity to get it right with you, Father God. For another opportunity to get it right with you, Father God. I pray, Lord, for each person here, including myself, Father God, who might have started out rocky this morning, Father God, but we give it all to you, Lord Jesus. We give it all to you, Lord, Father God. We ask that you would forgive us of the things that we've done wrong, Father God. For the doubt that's in our heart at times, Father God. For the sin that's in our hearts, Father God. For the words that we said that maybe that we shouldn't have said, Father God. For the anger that we might have had, Father God. For the patience that we didn't show. But yet we ask you to teach us patience. Father God, we're asking, Father God, that you would fill this place, Lord. That there's somebody here that is holding on to a burden, Lord. That you would shake it off of them, Father God. That you would hit them right in the chest right now, Father God. That you would wake them up, Father God, so they can see what you're trying to show them in this moment right now, Father God. Lord, we're asking you to start a revival through this place, Father God. 
We're asking you to start a revival through living grace, Father God. Let the revival start here, Father God, and let it spread through this place, Father God. Let it spread through this community, Lord Jesus. Father God, let us worship you like there is no tomorrow, Father God. Let us continue to lift our voices to you, Father God. In your precious name, Father God, let us worship. say anything after that but I want to tell you about what happened the last time I didn't sing the last time that I didn't sing when God told me to sing because I was trying to look at the clock or I was trying to think of what other people wanted me to do versus what God wanted me to do um, 
I didn't sing and I sat down and a week later I got sick and it's been about seven weeks that my voice hasn't healed. Mm. So, um, you know, take it as you will. Amen. But the way I take it is that I'm here to do God's work. Yes! And that he gave me this voice yes. for him. Um, this is a song that spoke to me this week and uh, I actually, I sent it over to my sister in Christ, Lori. Um, because, you know, Jesus gave me a miracle, and that miracle was my life. Amen. Um, Amen. Amen. And uh, I don't know. The song, the song speaks speaks itself. So I'm going to I'm going to sing this song. <laughs>
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you and around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and you're going in your waking and your joy sing he is for you 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 It's really funny, I uh, really struggle writing the message this week. I mean, like really struggle to where at 10 o'clock this morning, I was still working on the message. And the thing that usually happens, I don't get stressed out about it. I just continue to press and see what God's going to do because usually when it's something like that, I'm not supposed to preach. And I almost feel like that today because I, I feel like we've already had church. 
Amen. I, I feel like we've already had church. To me, it was from the, the, the opening song all the way up until I stepped into this pulpit. You have already had church. We, 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 we've talked about the glory of God. We, we've talked about how God is in control of all of our situations. We even sang about how great and glorious our God is. But I would be remiss if I did not share something from the word of God. Because we can't have church and, and not have people look and focus on Lord God Almighty. Amen? Amen. So I've got 19 pages <laughs> that I'm not going to give you. I've got something short and sweet. So if you can stand and honor God's word, I'd like the scripture to be brought up, Psalms 8, we'll stick with the same verse, and the sermon title is Things to Consider, but if I'm going to change it, there's one thing we need to consider, so if you put the scripture up for us, please, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name yes. in all the earth. Yes. You may be seated. Amen. Heavenly merciful Father, we come to you right now in the precious name of Jesus, Lord. I come asking you, Father God, to move me out of the way, Father God, and, and, and let me deliver what your church needs to hear today, Father God. We thank you for everything you've done. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Things to consider. When we say that word consider, it's thinking, it's, it's processing, it, it's, it's figuring out what we're going to do, and we do it all the time. Whether you're inviting somebody over to dinner, you consider, you plan, you think about what you're going to serve. Is it going to be chicken or beef? Am we just going to have appetizers or am I doing a whole meal? We consider where we go when we're going to go out. Am I taking the whole family out? Or is it just a romantic dinner for two? We, we consider where we're going to go on vacation. We consider if we're going to fly or we're going to drive. We consider things, but the question I have for you is simple. Have you considered the end? As you were walking in here this morning, did you stop? Did you ponder? Did you think about the ants that crawled beneath your feet? <clears throat> Probably not. And the reason we probably didn't think about them or even have a concern about them is because they're, they're minuscule, they're small, they're insignificant creatures. And maybe the only time that we think about the ant is when the ant is crawling across our table, getting on our sandwich at the picnic area. Or maybe when they bite your toe and you swat them and you don't give a second thought that you just wipe them out of existence. Right? But here's something to think about. The gap between you and God is greater than the gap between you and that ant. God is so much higher than we are, yet he still considers us. Matter of fact, my Bible says that he cares for us. This Psalm of David gives us a lot of things to consider, but the first thing that David gives us to consider is the greatness of God. I believe that when David wrote this Psalm, he was a king, but I believe that he imagined it as a boy. And I see in my holy imagination David lying flat in the grass as the sheep mull about him, and he's looking up at the stars. And then these words flow from his heart out of his mouth. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. When we look at that scripture so many times, we read it and we rush right through it, but we don't stop and pay attention to that first, O oh Lord. When we see that first, O oh Lord, it, it, it's, it's different than the second, Lord. 
because it's capitalized, and that's meaning that it's the name Yahweh, Lord God, Jehovah, the eternal, all-knowing, all-powerful creator God. This is not a random God. This is not a false God. This is not a God who cannot see and cannot hear. This is the God that answers your prayers. This is El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty. El Elyon, the Most High God. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Jehovah El Roy, the God who sees. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. When was the last time that you thought that you considered, that you pondered God like you ponder your problems. You see, because what we do when we have an issue, we have a care, we have a concern, we will sit up all night trying to think of every angle and how we're going to work it out. When we have a problem, a burden, an issue, a care, we'll walk back and forth through the hallways. We will sit up and we'll write, figure out how to work it out. But have you ever considered that God, that is so much bigger than you, is so much bigger than your problems. When your world is spinning out of control, let's stop meditating and med meditating and, and pondering and thinking and considering our problems. And let's think about the Lord God Almighty. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is his name. That name not only gives us his person, but it also gives us his position. Oh, Lord, our Lord. He's saying that I am, he's saying that that is his master. So many Christians today, they want salvation without sacrifice. They want a heavenly home without holy living. They want to, to overcome without being obedient. And saints, I want you to understand either he is Lord of all of your life or he is not Lord at all in your life. You, you cannot take part and parcel of my God. He considers you. Matter of fact, he does more than consider you. He loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for you. Amen. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Our God, so great, so awesome, so mighty, so wonderful, so all-knowing, so the all-sufficient God sacrifices all so that you may get back to the place where we're supposed to be. Sister Latoya said it up here earlier. She said we're not bound anymore. The only bound thing we have is we're heaven bound. Amen. But you don't get to heaven simply by coming to church. You don't get to heaven simply by wearing a suit and carrying a Bible. The only way to get to glory is if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That, that's it. That's bottom line. People may not like it. They may not want to hear it. But we're his representatives. We're the ones who have to carry that bloodstained banner to the world. My prayer today is that everybody under the sound of my voice has accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because the truth of the matter is, we don't know what tomorrow holds. I sometimes volunteer over at hospice. And sometimes people are here today and they are literally gone tomorrow. They didn't have time to plan. They didn't have time to prepare. But you today have time to consider the question, will you accept Jesus? Have you accepted Jesus? If you were to die today, where would you go? And if you can't say beyond a shadow of a doubt that I would go home to be with my Lord and my Savior, the time to ask him into your life is today. Stand to your feet. Heavenly, merciful Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, Lord, 
as we prepare, Father God, we just want to uh, prepare to partake in communion, Lord. I want you to touch your people, Lord. And if there be one in this place, Lord, who hasn't accepted you as Lord and Savior, Father, I pray that you don't let them rest, Father God. I pray that you don't give them sleep, Father God. I, I pray, Lord, that you just keep pulling at them and drawing them, Father God, until they accept you as Lord God Almighty. I know that you don't want any to be lost, Father God. And so I pray, Lord, that our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our nieces, our aunts, our uncles, all those people that we cry out for to accept you, Lord, that they hear the message and they answer the call. And so if you're in this place and you can't remember a time, place, or occurrence that you asked the Lord Jesus into your life and you want to make him your savior, won't you do it now? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Amen. 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 We also asked the question, I don't believe we have any visitors here today, but... We're going to go right into our communion service. Amen? Amen? So go ahead and prepare your hearts and minds as we prepare to move into communion. Amen. This is what the word of God says. Therefore, Whoever eats the bread or drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That's why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judge ourselves, we will not be come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so we will not be condemned with the world. And so now my prayer today is that you would search your own hearts and you get right with the Lord. So if you have something on your heart, would you go to the Lord with it?
Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, just thanking you for allowing us to have this opportunity to partake in communion, Lord. We ask you, Father God, to make these elements nourishing to our body, Father God, but more importantly than being nourishing to our bodies, Father God, help us to be obedient to your will and your word, Father. We pray right now, Lord, that uh, if we have anything that is held against somebody, Lord, that we would forgive them like we ask you to forgive us. And so we just thank you for all these things in your son Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do likewise. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Do likewise. Heavenly merciful Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this service. We thank you for everything that you blessed us with, Father God. We ask you to remember all those who are going through rough times, Father God. We remember all those who lost loved ones in Texas, Father God. Remember all those who are going through war in the Ukraine, Father God. We remember all those who are suffering right here at home, Father. We place them all at your feet, Lord, and ask you to do what only you can do. Bless and keep them, Lord. As we prepare to depart from this place, but never from your presence, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and the praise. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. amen. Go in peace and may the God of peace go with you. Amen.